Welcome to Edgecast, the series where we show you tips, tricks, and best practices when using Solid Edge. In this episode, I'll be talking about how to use the synchronous steering wheel to greater effect in Solid Edge ST10. This is a fairly well established function, and this video will be relevant for earlier versions of Solid Edge. So if you're not using ST10 yet, this may still be useful to you. I'll start by talking about what the steering wheel is, its different components, and what they do. Then I'll bring up a few demos and show you how to move and copy part faces effectively in synchronous parts, and how to do the same in the assembly environment with components. The steering wheel itself is fairly intuitive, so this video is going to be largely made up of demos, not presentation slides. As a final tip, I'll show you how to move part faces in the assembly environment. Now those of you who are new to Solid Edge might be wondering what the steering wheel is, and why it's so important. The steering wheel is the 3D tool that shows up whenever you select a part face in synchronous mode, and it's also seen in the assembly environment. I've heard some users call it the movement triad, which is a reasonable description for what it does, but Siemens documents refer to it as the steering wheel. When viewed in full, it appears as three white arrows and a white circle, with additional blue elements used for repositioning. The components of the steering wheel are divided into two groups. Anything white is used for reorientation of selected faces, and anything blue is mostly used for reorientation of the steering wheel itself. The torus wheel is used for rotation of the selected faces around the centre of the steering wheel. The tool plane is used to lock movement of faces in one plane and reorient the torus wheel. It's a special case, it can reorient both faces and the steering wheel. The origin sphere allows you to move the steering wheel to key points and edges in 3D, the three axial arrows you can see are used for linear movement of faces, and the seven directional spheres are used to reorient the steering wheel elements without moving the origin sphere. So before I start this first part demo, here are some of the commands you'll be seeing. The first two are fairly straightforward, just moving and rotating faces, but many users are unsure of how to reorient the steering wheel effectively, so I'll be showing you how to do that as well. I'll also show you how to use the copy command and another function that some people just don't know exists, which is moving faces while the steering wheel's in an offset position. So I have my steering wheel here, but I want to make it bigger for this demo. I'll go into Solid Edge Options, navigate to the Helpers tab, then resize the steering wheel with this option here. The reason this option's here is not to make life easier for training instructors, but because the steering wheel has a set pixel count and on 4K monitors will appear as far too small without this option set. If you happen to be using a 4K screen, you're probably going to need this. Here I've got a synchronous part, which I'm going to play around with. First, I'm going to extend the main body by 100mm by selecting it, and using one of the three arrows to move it outwards. This is by far the simplest synchronous move we can do. The faces I'm moving, or the select set, is always going to be highlighted in green, I could add more faces to it, either by control clicking more faces, by fence selecting with my mouse, or by toggling the select mode on my mouse with spacebar. Now that I've selected all faces in this flange, I want to rotate it about the top edge. So I'll reposition the steering wheel by dragging the origin sphere to this edge, and click on the torus wheel to start the rotate command. Note that all these faces are highlighted blue until I've confirmed an angle. And if I've done something I change my mind about later, I can always hit Ctrl Z. Now when moving faces around, just remember that design intent may prevent certain edits. There's more on that in the Intro to Synchronous mode video. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to turn all live rules off. Also, bear in mind that there are three modes of operation in the Move command. Normally you can work with the default, but in this example, I'm trying to move this one face back into the model. The faces are trying to trim back the rest of the model, and I don't want that. So I'll change the connected faces option to tip. And now I want to move these mounting holes around on the top face of the anchor. There are a few options available to me. First, I can select the holes and use the tool plane to lock movement in one plane. I'll change my key point snapping to center point only, and then single left click the blue tool plane. 
If you try this yourself and don't get immediate snapping, just hover for a second over an edge or key point, and it should snap your moving geometry to where you want it. Then left-click to confirm the new position. The other use for the tool plane is to reorient the torus wheel. Holding shift and clicking the plane will reorient the steering wheel, meaning your rotate command can be redefined about a different axis. If you want to move features in a more precise fashion, left-click on a directional arrow, and your feature's movement will be locked in that one dimension only. Keying in a value gives me a movement direction and a distance. Of course, this depends on your arrows pointing in the right direction, but you can always reorient them. If I select the directional sphere on the end of this arrow, I can key in a new angle or point to another key point. This means my movements will always be precise. There should be no need for the inspect or measure commands. Now I want to move the entire top feature on this part. I'll select it quickly, but if I fence select it all from the top, I'll select faces I don't want. So let's try it from a different angle. In more complex models, there are other tools you could use to select only the features you want. But for now, let's move this steering wheel to the part edge. You'll notice it can be offset as far as you like from the selected faces. Now in this case, I want to move the feature by a distance of exactly half the part length, minus the radius of these rounds. Luckily, there's a convenient key point I can use to make this move. In its full form, the same rules apply when trying to reorient the steering wheel. Just clicking the directional spheres will allow reorientation. And if we have a 3D key point to work with, this is fine. However, if you need to lock an axis of rotation when repositioning, you'll need to shift-click on a sphere and reposition with values, or by clicking on a key point. Then carry out your move commands as normal. Just bear in mind when using the steering wheel moves that you may inadvertently merge faces in your part. Here's a good example. This face would prevent the top feature from being moved back into the middle. It's possible to separate it again with a split-face surfacing command, but it's usually easier to just hit undo and rethink the move. Something else you may wish to use is key point snapping during a steering wheel move. Sometimes key points on an edge are difficult to locate. If that's the case, it's useful to start the move, then hit the K key on your keyboard to enable explicit key point snapping. Hover your mouse over a part edge, and then hit either M, E, C, or S for midpoint, endpoint, center point, or silhouette point respectively. You don't have to remember these hotkeys, as they're detailed in the prompt bar. If I follow this workflow, first by starting the move, then pressing K, hovering over an edge, then M, I can move my mouse very slightly and have my selected feature snap to the midpoint of this edge. Left-clicking will finish the move. I'll do the same with this hole, but this time I'll use the end point of the edge instead. Personally, I use this function as a backup for when I'm trying to lock onto a difficult key point and can't find it easily with my mouse. But you might want to adopt it as your main method of working. Now we know it's possible to offset the steering wheel from the selected set. What happens if you don't have any geometry to move the steering wheel to, but you know how far away you want it to be offset? This can be done by holding down shift, then left-clicking on one of the arrows. Now when you move your mouse, you don't move the geometry along an axis but the steering wheel on its own. This has a number of applications. For example, let's create a revolved feature from a single flat face. I'll shift-click on this arrow and move the offset to 150mm away from the centre of the inside edge. Now, if I change my related face option to tip again, I could revolve this face around the offset by, let's say, 90 degrees. Just bear in mind that while this is incredibly quick, you can't change the point of rotation for the feature afterwards, but you can change the radius of these features if needs be. Finally, I'd like to show one of the most useful features of Solid Edge when it comes to reusing geometry. The ability to copy faces and features. In synchronous mode, it's possible to copy groups of faces independently of the features that created them. I'm going to exactly replicate this top feature of the anchor on the other side of the part, using Copy and Paste. First, I'll select all the features I want to copy. Once again, 
making sure I don't have any that I don't need. Let's remove this face from my select set. Yeah, much better. In synchronous mode, the anchor point for any copied features is always dictated by the steering wheel, so it's a good idea to position it carefully before copying. Note the orientation of the tool plane. Now we'll copy, flip the model over, and hit Ctrl V. This attaches the steering wheel to my mouse, and also a preview of the copied faces. Now I could just left click and rotate all these features around, but instead I'll lock onto this flat plane with the F3 key, which reorients my steering wheel tool plane, and with it, the copied faces. Now when I left click, the faces appear purple by default. This is Solid Edge's way of telling me that I've got surfaces present, instead of solid geometry. Both hole and the copied faces appear at the bottom of my feature tree, so let's go ahead and reattach them. Right now, I just need to make sure my geometry creates a valid solid. So I'll move everything a little to the right, then right-click in empty space and select Attach. This creates solid geometry again, which I can move around just like the original feature. Now that's all well and good in my current session of Solid Edge, but what if I need to copy more than one set of features? What if I need to share these features with another user? It's possible to do both of these with a feature library, which works on the idea that just as an assembly is a collection of parts, so a part is a collection of faces and features. Same as before, I'll select my faces, position my steering wheel around an anchor point, and then open my feature library tab on the left side of my screen. Now I've created a folder called feature library on my desktop, so I'll add my selected faces as an entry with the plus symbol. Let's give it a sensible name. If I create a new part, I'll be able to recreate the feature with the correct parameters and with a hole in the middle of it. Now my feature's in the part, but I'll have to reorient it to ensure it attaches correctly. But that's nothing we haven't already covered in this video. If you've got a complex set of features to move, it may be worth grouping them together for easier selection in the feature tree. Feature libraries can be quite adaptable. As a rule, if you can select something in 3D space, you can add it to the feature library. This also works as sketches, in case you were wondering. So that covers steering wheel in the pass environment, but what about the assembly environment? When you select a component in the assembly, you'll see a steering wheel attached to the part at the point on the screen where you left clicked. If this doesn't show up, it's probably because move on select is not active on your home tab. The entire selected part will turn green and the steering wheel can be used as a movement tool. Something to bear in mind though, is that move is a command that will try to redefine or break assembly relationships whereas the drag command can't. So if you're trying to move an unconstrained mechanism around with your mouse, use the drag command, not move. Here we've got an unfinished assembly. As you can probably see, there are a few bolts missing. So I'll add one to the assembly environment from my part library. The most obvious method of using a steering wheel in the assembly is to move around an unconstrained part. Because move on select is on, I get my steering wheel and I can move my part around. However, this isn't particularly useful. We want to position and constrain this bolt. Drag component would allow the same sort of movement, but with collision avoidance, and the addition of constraints will reposition the bolt anyway. Ah, I'll just make sure my rotation is locked. I want my assembly to be fully constrained. So what use is the steering wheel here? If you remember, we were able to move and copy faces and features in the part environment. And the same holds true for parts in the assembly. We can both move and copy them. This means you don't need to search for components over and over again. In this case, I'll use the steering wheel to copy two bolts across to the other side of the flange. First, select my parts. Then I need to specify my start point. The midpoint of the bolt hole will do. Then I need to set move action to copy, 
or hold down Control before my move. Now when I click for the new location, by default this menu will appear. As I'm copying bolts that have relationships applied, I have three options. Either do not repair relationships, which means you either have to delete or suppress them, attempt to repair the relationships, in short, finding a new home for them, or removing all relationships and starting to create new ones. I'll choose the second one. And because I move these bolts into two new bolt holes on the same plane, I can specify a new home for them without adding an offset. When we select them, you can see the relationships have been cloned across, saving me time that would otherwise have been spent recreating them. So the steering wheel is very useful as a method of part copying, but you can copy assembly components in three different ways, not just the one. The first is to left-click, drag and drop from the assembly pathfinder, then reposition. The second is to select a component in the assembly and use Windows copy paste functions to create new instances. If you already know how to use Ctrl C, Ctrl V, this should be fairly straightforward. Finally, you can use the steering wheel to select a component, start a move command, and then use Ctrl or set move operation to copy. We've already covered this, but I'll show you the other two methods now. To start with, I'll use the first method I mentioned, left click and drag. Now I'll position it using the F key to flip alignment if I need to. Now I'll show you what happens if I control click and drag, as I would in Windows File Explorer. Now the parts appeared, but it's grounded, and we can't see it. If I isolate it, you can see it's been relocated to the base coordinate system. That's useful if I don't have a grounded part in the assembly already, but it's not so useful right now. Let's restore the previous view settings and delete this bolt. Control c and Control v work in the same way they do in the part environment, but in this case we're copying parts, not features. Make sure I lock rotation this time and flip orientation so that I don't have to redefine relationships afterwards. Now for the last two bolts, I'll use the steering wheel move with action set to copy. Because these flanges are the same on both sides of the part, I can use the second repair option, as I did before and fully constrain the copied bolts. Of course, I could have just patterned these bolts a couple of times, but sometimes you just don't have that option. Finally, if you're working in an assembly with synchronous components, it's possible to carry out some of your edits without having to either open the part file or use the edit in place command. This is done by changing the select tool priority, meaning your mouse is going to be looking for faces instead of parts. My preferred method of turning this on is to use control and spacebar, because I quite like keyboard shortcuts, but you can get the same result by choosing the mode you want from the drop down menu under the select command. This then allows the same edits previously made to the part faces to be made from the assembly, providing the user has right access to the part files in question. It also allows you to drag faces to key points in the assembly, edit 3D dimensions, and create synchronous relationships. But if you want them to be persistent relationships, it'll only work with faces in the same component. So a simple example would be to make some edits to this main valve body, which I know was created in synchronous mode. First, I need to change my Select Tool priority, so I'll turn on Face Priority under the Select Tool menu. You can see the icon next to my mouse changing to a white diamond shape, and also that I'm highlighting faces now, not the whole part. Let's start off by editing some rounds, just like I would in the part environment. A uh, radius of 2mm should be okay. Multiple faces can be selected, and as you can see here, my steering wheel works as you would expect in the part environment. Faces can also be moved or rotated to other key points in the assembly. 
Well, I'm going to point this face at a few other elements. Having key point selection set to all means I might need to be a little more careful about where I place my mouse. So you may want to change it to whichever point type you're looking for, to avoid confusion. Explicit selection with the K key is much more useful here in my experience. Here's a more interesting example I made. Making a jig made for an older bracket fit around a brand new one. Because I still have four jig fixtures, I can use my steering wheel to repurpose the existing geometry to fit the new product. If necessary, I can also use my face relationships, which now act as face move commands, to match the diameters of the new bracket holes. So in summary, we've covered the main methods of moving faces around a synchronous model and explained how to copy faces or entire features. In the assembly environment, we've also seen how the steering wheel can be used to move components around and override assembly constraints, copy existing assembly components and redefine the copied assembly relationships in many cases. Finally, we covered the synchronous part edits that are possible when using the select tool in face priority mode allowing parts to be edited in a synchronous fashion while still in the assembly environment. Thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions, topics you'd like us to cover, or other feedback, please either leave a comment below or send them to us by email at support at cuttingedge.co.uk. And be sure to tune in to watch the next episode of Edgecast.